last time about what it means to be an inverse, how to find them, <clears throat> all that good stuff. So we're going to continue that discussion, but uh, switch it over to another special type of matrix that is also invertible and will help us write our uh, invertible matrix as a product, basically breaking an invertible matrix down into a product, which will allow us to prove some results and uh, talk about how to solve the system of equations in a different way. So that's on today's agenda. So this is section 2.4, which talks about elementary matrices. All right, so uh, just to give you an example real quick about the type of matrix that we're talking about and the effect that products have, or the products of these matrices have with other matrices, let's just do a really short, small example. Let's say I take the matrix 1, 0, negative 2, 1, and multiply it by the matrix, <coughs> pardon me, 2, 5, Four negative six. Thank you. All right. So when we multiply these two matrices together, what do we get? What's the first row going to be? Yeah. So the first entry will be a two. The next entry will be a Five, right? So notice when I multiply by that matrix, didn't change the first row at all, right? One thing I want to notice. What do we get when we multiply? Uh, when we do the second row, what do we get? It is zero and negative sixteen. Okay. All right. Notice that again. We said that it left the first row alone, and the second row ended up with a zero here, got a negative 16 here. Uh, let's think about a row operation we might have got to the same place. Notice if you take negative two times the first row and add it to the second row, what do you end up with? That, right? If I did negative root two row one, add it to row two, I get that, right? Look at your elementary matrix. This is negative, if I start with the identity matrix, this is negative two times the first row added to the second row from the identity matrix. So this is, gives you an idea of what an elementary matrix is and what products do. So let's just write down what they are. An elementary matrix is a, well, it's square to start with. Square matrix that is exactly one elementary row operation away from the identity. So you, can, you start with the identity matrix, whatever size identity matrix you have, doesn't matter the size. You do exactly one elementary row operation. Either multiply a row by a non-zero constant, that's one elementary row operation, or swap two rows, that's one elementary row operation, or do what we've done here, take a row, row i times, a multiple, uh, times something, add it to row j, replace row j. Exactly one row operation away. That's what we make with an elementary matrix. <clears throat> Pardon. Now I did a two by two here, so uh, but again it could be any size at all. So for example, if you had something like uh, zero one zero one zero 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 one. What row operation has been done to the identity there? Yeah, it's swap row one, row two. So that's a, that's a three by three elementary matrix. One row operation done to the identity matrix. Okay. 
Not more than one, literally exactly one, right? Okay. Or if you had one zero 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 one zero 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 five zero 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 one. What do we do there? Yeah, multiply the three, row three by five, right? Okay. Again, one step. If you had another constant here, then that's not an elementary matrix anymore. Because you would have done two row operations at that point. Right? One more example. What happened to that one? Yeah, good. We're going to multiply row 3 by 4 and add it to row 1, right? We can also go up, right? The other one went down when we had the 2 by 2 example to start, but we can also go up. This is 4 times row 3 added to row 1 replaced row 1. Now, the idea behind these elementary matrices is that we can achieve all of the row operations that we do to put a matrix in reduced row echelon form through matrix multiplication. Because multiplying on the left by an elementary matrix has the effect of doing that row operation that was done on the elementary matrix to the one you're multiplying by, right? We saw that, we saw an example of that up here, right? We said that. If we start with the identity and multiply row 1 by negative 2 added to row 2, and then do this product, it has the exact same effect. And you can go through and prove that using the entries of a matrix. It's not hard to prove. You just have to go through each individual thing and do it. But it really, literally does just have that exact same uh, effect. So just to write that down, multiplication, oops on the left by an elementary matrix has the same effect on, oops, oh, let's see, on <laughs> the other matrix, we'll just say, I'm not saying it very well as far as English goes has the same effect on the other matrix as the row operation done to the elementary matrix or done to get the elementary matrix. Has to be on the left because of the way that rows and columns match up, right? You take your row across and multiply on the left, you affect the columns on the other side, right? You multiply on the right, you're going to get a different type of operation. In fact, multiplication on the left gives you row operations. If you do it on the right hand side, you'll end up with we can call elementary column operations out of the row. We're not going to do that because we can't do it that way. We'll keep our multiplication on the left here. All right. So one of the, we're going to do a couple of things with elementary oper, uh, elementary matrices. We'll come back to this uh, elementary matrices idea when we start determinants in the next chapter because it'll help us get uh, some results for determinants. But for right now, we're going to just write a matrix as a product of elementary matrices if we can, and then we'll use this idea to help us solve systems, give us another way to solve systems, which is important in solving systems numerically in applications. Okay. So let's just uh, say we've got the matrix 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 3, 0, 0, 0, 1. And we want to write, if possible, we want to write this matrix as a product 
of elementary row operation or elementary matrices. There's not really any good reason why you would expect that as being the goal for right now. Like I said, we're going to use this idea here in a minute to help us solve a, write a different way to solve systems. And we'll, get, we'll use it later when we talk about being able to compute determinants. But for right now, just bear with me. We're just going to do it for fun. Okay. Sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? All right. So here's the idea. If we want to write this as a product of elementary matrices, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the inverse. Just go through the row operations as we would for finding the inverse. Okay. How do we find the inverse of a matrix again? What do we do? Oops, what do we do with a matrix? Yeah, we do an augmented matrix, right? What do we augment on the right? The identity, good. All right. And we put it in reduced row echelon form. If it's invertible, we'll see the identity on the left-hand side, and then the inverse will be on the right-hand side. Yeah. Okay. What should we do first? Good. Row one plus row two replace row two. Oops, I don't know why I didn't start writing that again. Uh, we get a zero, add down, we'll get a one, a zero, and then a one, one, zero there. And the third row doesn't change. A pretty short example. We'll do a, hopefully a longer one here in a minute. We're almost there. What's the last thing we need, the second thing we need to do, and last thing we need to do? Good. Two times row two plus row one plus row one. Uh, doesn't, doesn't change the last two rows at all. Add up, we get one, zero, zero. <clears throat> two times one plus one gives me a three. Two times one plus zero gives me a two and a zero here. All right, so the inverse of the original is this matrix on the right, right? The 3, 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, all right? So again, what it means to be an inverse is that you would take this matrix, I'm going to do it on the, uh, either side, but I'm going to do it on the left here. If I take that 3, 2, 0 and multiply it by 1, negative 2, 0, Negative one three zero 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 one. What are we supposed to get when we're done? The identity matrix, right? I'll just write I rather than writing the whole thing. We agree that's what it means to be an inverse, correct? Okay. <clears throat> so this is the inverse of this matrix, correct? Notice I'm multiplying on the left. We just said a minute ago that if we multiply on the left by elementary matrices. That puts me in, uh, it, does the, it has the equivalent row operations, right? So if I multiply first by the elementary row, uh, the elementary matrix that does this row operation, and then does this row operation, we would get the identity as well, correct? So if I took, let me write this right below it, if we took this matrix, and then first multiplied by this elementary matrix 
make sure I get the right one. That should accomplish the first row operation that we did, right? Let me scroll back down real quick. Zoom out a little bit. The first row operation we did was row one added to row two, replaced row two. That's exactly what this elementary row up, uh, this elementary matrix does to the identity, right? Or I should say, that's what we've done to the identity to get this elementary matrix. So if I multiply this by that, whoops, the original matrix, I should get that, which you can check. And then the next row operation that we did was two times row two added to row one, replace row one. What would your elementary matrix look like to do that row operation? This is the row operation I'm interested in. What would the elementary matrix look like that accomplishes that row operation? Okay, so you start with the identity matrix, right? And then do that operation to the identity matrix. So what should I fill in with the rest of it? This is the, uh, this is the operation I'm worried about. Yeah, I should have a two and a zero here, right? That's two times row two added to row one, isn't it? And then the rest are zeros here. So this one accomplishes the first row operation we did. This one accomplishes the second row operation we did. What did we end up with when we're done? Yeah, it was the identity matrix, right? That's how we got to the identity, wasn't it? We did row one plus row two added to row two, and then we did two times row two added to row one. That was how we ended up with the identity matrix, right? Agree? Yeah? Okay. So looking at these equations, what do you think this thing and this thing have to be? I look at this one matrix on this left-hand side and this two matrices on this left-hand side. What do you think has to be true? They better equal each other, right? If I move this to the other side, I would get A. If I move this product to the other side, I get again, right? Again, what we started with, right? So this part right here, when you do 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, times 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, that product has to be, if I call this matrix A, that has to be A inverse, right? But so now I've got A inverse written as a product of elementary matrices, right? Remember that I started this problem by saying write it as a product of elementary matrices, the original matrix, right? Right now I have the inverse written as a product of elementary matrices. How do you think I can get back to the, in, uh, the original? What do you think we should do? Yeah, find, well, yeah, I just need to undo this inverse idea, right? Do the inverse on both sides. So A must be the inverse of that product. Well, we talked last time right near the end of class. How do you do the inverse of a product? You put on your socks, you put on your shoes. How do you undo that? 
you flip them and take the inverse of each and flip them, right? So this will be the second one's inverse times the first one's inverse. So now we need to figure out what the inverse of an elementary matrix is. Hmm. Sounds hard, but it's not too bad. Think about how we got the elementary matrix. In particular, how did we get this first one? Ignore the inverse sign. How did we get the inverse of the first one? Or excuse me, how did we get this first elementary matrix? Where'd it come from? Yeah, a row operation, right? I added row one to row two to replace row two. I want to undo that. I want the inverse. How do you undo adding row one to row two replace row two? Okay, so yeah, do negative one times row one added to row two, right? That'll undo it. That'll put a zero back there, doesn't it? Okay. So the inverse of the first one is just going to look almost exactly the same as the first one, except that I'm going to replace that one in the two one entry to a negative one. That undoes it, right? And you can check if I multiply these two matrices together, you really will get the identity matrix, I promise. So what do you think the inverse of the second one's going to be? So what's the only thing that's going to change? The 2 will be a negative 2, yeah. So if you're going to invert the matrix that you've got one row added to another or replace the second row, the inverse is just make that constant be the opposite of what you started with. That'll undo it. What if you swap two rows? What's the inverse of swapping two rows? Putting them back. Putting them back. It's doing the exact same row swap, right? <laughs> so if you've got a row swap is the URL entry matrix, then the inverse is itself. So the one does the swap and then it does the redoes it, right? What is it if you multiply by C to a row, how do you undo that? Multiply by both the, by the constant c. How would you undo that? One over c. One over c. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can find all those inverses of those matrices just by doing the inverse of the row operation that you did. All right. So this is how you go through and write a is a product of elementary matrices. <clears throat> Pardon. Let's do another one since you all seem to love that one so much. Let's do another one. Okay. All right. Same directions. Let's look at the matrix 1, 2, 3, 2, 5, 6, 1, 3, 4. Same goal, write this as a product of elementary matrices. If you're asked to write something as a product of elementary matrices, it's really asking you to find the inverse first. Okay. I can't write it as a product of elementary matrices unless I know what the sequence of elementary row operations is to put it in reduced row echelon form. I don't really have to augment the identity matrix, by the way. I just need to know what row oper. If I'm literally just trying to write it as a product of elementary matrices, I don't actually have to do the operation on the right hand side. That's to find the inverse, right? Now I'm going to do it so that we practice it again. But generally speaking, if it's just asking for a product of elementary matrices, it's just asking us to put this in reduced row echelon form and keep track of the uh, row operations we use to do that. All right? But we'll do the inverse at the same time. Oops. 
don't know why I did that. First thing we need to do is what? Good. Negative two, row one, plus row two, replace row two. And we'll also do, and replace row three, good. Everybody agree with those two operations to start it off? Okay. Doesn't change row one. Row two becomes zero, one, zero, and then negative two, one, zero. If I did my arithmetic right. The other one is zero, one, one, negative one, zero, one. And I'm going quickly through the arithmetic. Hopefully I'm not making any mistakes as we go along, but everybody okay with the process? Next step. Okay. Good. Do negative two times the second row added to the first. Do negative row one, two added to the third. Get those zeros, right? Doesn't change row Oops. two at all. Row one becomes one, zero, three. Five, negative two, zero. Row three becomes zero, zero, one. And then what? One, negative one, one. <clears throat> Again, assuming I've done my arithmetic correctly. So far so good with the process? I think we got one more step. Yes? What's the last step? Good. So that doesn't change the last two rows. One, zero, zero. Negative three plus five is two. Three plus negative two is one. Negative three plus zero is negative three. Again, I know I did the arithmetic quickly, but the point of this problem is not to do all the arithmetic, but keep track of the row operations. And we're going to do that again here in another example where we're doing the LE, uh, the other method we're going to talk about for solving systems and equations. <clears throat> the process of putting in reduced row echelon form, okay, though. Just okay so far? Okay. So, uh, just to remind, the inverse now of the original matrix is this part, right? That is the inverse. Okay. But we've also got the inverse as a product of elementary row operations. So the first one we so these this I'm going to number them just since we went did them in order. One, two, three, four, five. We did five elementary row operations to put this in reduced row echelon form, right? We agree? All right. <clears throat> so if I start with the original matrix A and multiply on the left in that order, one, two, three, four, five, but going from right to left in that case, that's going to give me the identity matrix. Now, one thing that you'll notice in the book, in other, uh, other books, they typically use an E sub whatever to denote an elementary matrix. So again, I've numbered them one through five. So if I do E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, that gives us the identity matrix. Again, I have to go in order from the first one you did to the last one you did. Now, sometimes it won't matter the order. I could swap E1 and E2 around. 
because E1 was add row one to row two, E2 was add row one to row three. Doesn't matter which order I did that in, I would end up in the same box, right? So I could swap around E1 and E2, same way with E3 and E4. Okay. Agree with that? Okay. Now going, remember the whole goal of this problem was to write A as a product of elementary matrices, right? So to take A as a product of elementary matrices, I need to move this whole product to the other side. Well, we know that an inverse of a product is the product of the inverses, but reverse the order, right? So A at the end should be E1 inverse, E2 inverse, E3 inverse, or five. Notice that the product that you're going to use for A is the sequence that we used in that order, right? I now have one, two, three, four, five in order, but you're going to do the inverse of each of them, right? So we're going to do the row operations in order to give us the elementary matrices that give us A, but I do the inverse of each of them. So we move to the other side. That makes sense? Okay. So the first one was what again? I scroll down and zoom a little out a little bit. The first one was the negative two row one plus row two. So the op the inverse of doing negative two row one added to row two is do what? Your positive two added, right? So your first one will be one zero zero two one zero 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 one. That'll be the first one. That's two times row one added to row two, right? What will the next one be? Right, row one plus row three, right? You're doing the op we do the opposite of what we had, right? So what's that gonna look like for your elementary matrix? Good, yep, exactly right. One zero 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 one zero one zero one, adding row one down to row three. How about the next one? Good, yep, two row two plus row one replace row one. So what's it going to look like? Well, we're going to go two to one, right? So it's going to be one, yeah, one, two, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one, right? Start with the identity and do that row operation. So two times row two added to row one. What was the next one? Or what is the next one going to be? Good. So it's going to look like oh, zero zero one zero sorry one zero 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 one zero zero one one. Because it'll be a row two added to row three, and one more to go. What's the last one look like? Good. Because we're going to add three row three to row one. So remember again to create the, oh yeah. Always the you're always performing the, yeah, to get the elementary matrix, you're always starting with the identity matrix and performing the row operation to that, yep. So again, every single one of these should be one row operation away from the identity matrix. Yeah. Is the last row? Yeah. Is the last row? Zero, zero, one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> zero, zero, one in the last row, yeah. It's a mess.
especially that second entry in the third row, yeah? Zero. Oh, I was from Washington. Something along those lines, yes? The process okay, though? Ish. Yeah. Take some practice. Good news is that you can always check your answer, right? You could multiply those five things back together and see that you get A. Not saying it would be fun, I'm just saying you could. Okay. All right. So, again, the idea of being able to break this down, pardon me, one is that you're used to, or at least I hope you're used to, breaking things down into smaller problems, doing, doing factoring, right? This kind of looks like a factoring thing. Uh, unlike what you were used to, though, before this class, this sequence of row operations that puts A and reduced row echelon form isn't unique, right? You could do a lot of different things. I mean, you could always swap and swap back several times. So it's not a unique factorization, but it is a factorization. Okay? So there's going to be another factorization that we're going to talk about that can help us solve systems and equations. And like I said, has lots of useful, useful applications in the real world. So uh, lest you don't believe me, I... Uh, Dr. Olson's husband does data science applications for a space company. So I asked him to go through, I teach you numerical analysis, some of you are also in that class. Teach you numerical analysis this semester. I'm not an applied mathematician by any stretch of the imagination. So I asked him to look at a table of contents for a textbook and say, can you tell me what's important in industry? What we're going to talk about, he wrote as essential in industry. Okay. Take his word for it. He knows, he knows what he's doing in that industry. I don't know what's going on in industry, but I can certainly know to take a professional's opinion when they know a heck of a lot more than I do about it. All right. So that's the process that we're going to do is actually honest to goodness used as a uh, system solving technique. Okay. The reason why is because think about how we've had to do our systems of uh, solving systems of equations. We've done row reduction using Gaussian elimination, right? And we always took the matrix and augmented the constants and then row reduced. Well, if your parameters change and you need to change that constant column, you're going to have to go through and recompute everything again to solve it, right? And then if the parameters change again, then you got to change that constant column. You have to go through and resolve it all again. That's time consuming. It'd be better to have a method where I can change the parameters and do a few computations rather than having to row reduce the whole thing again. Row reduction is an expensive uh, thing to do, computationally speaking. It requires a lot of operations in the worst case. Okay? If you can do it once, and then use that one time to help you change constants at the end, then you don't have to do as nearly as many computations and it saves you a lot of computational time. And again, for our purposes, of course, we're talking about things that we're solving that are, you know, three variables, three unknowns, three equations, three unknowns, four equations, four unknowns, those are huge. In applications, you're talking hundreds of variables and hundreds of equations that you're dealing with at a time, right? 